Hello everyone, welcome back to Dark Souls. In the previous episode we got out of the Northern Undead Asylum and I will keep playing now. Um, in case you didn't catch that in the first episode, I'm not just playing the game, I'm also going to look at game design, the, the design that's driving this game. Uh, all the little details and all the awesome stuff, I mean I'm not gonna go into boring detail, just the 101 of game design. Uh, and we're gonna look at pretty much everything. Uh, story writing, uh, plots, oh, hello. Uh, level design, world design, combat flow, etc. Right, well, when we arrived, we started off here. The first thing you see is the bonfire, and you're happy because that means healing. And, of course, that guy. And he is placed there to give you direction. Because right now you have absolutely no idea where to go and what to do. Um, in the Undead Asylum, um, the guy with the big shiny armor uh, told you that you're supposed to ring the bell and then the fate of the undead shall be revealed. So that's how much we know about the story so far. And let's go! Well, what do we have here? You must be a new arrival. Let me guess. Fate of the undead, right? Well, you're not the first. But there's no salvation here. You'd have done better to rot in the undead asylum. But too late now. <sighs> well, since you're here, let me help you out. There are actually two bells of awakening. One's up above in the undead church. The other is far, far below, in the ruins at the base of Blight Town. Ring them both, and something happens. Brilliant, right? Not much to go on. But I have a feeling that won't stop you. So, off you go. It is why you came, isn't it? To this accursed land of the undead? <laughs> Oh, that's funny, friend. Alright, so right away we find out that uh, we weren't told exactly everything. Th there were some details that were hidden, like there was two bells, not one. Apparently that guy over there in the asylum didn't know all everything. Ah, your face. You're practically hollow. But who knows? Going hollow could solve quite a bit. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Ooh, what? Restoring your humanity? Well, yes, please. Few ways to go about it. Collect it bit by bit from corpses. Or you can butter up a cleric and get yourself summoned. And the quickest way, although I never do it, is to kill a healthy undead and pillage its humanity. Coveting thy neighbor is only human, after all. <laughs> hmm. All right, well, so he gives some direction here. Basically, we're supposed to find two bells of awakening and then the fate of the undead will be revealed. He's not too excited about it, he, he thinks it's a waste of time, that's the impression I get. Um, and also he says, yeah, you're not the first who who's tried it. You, you're not really chosen, you, you're not the only one, you're not the first. Uh, but you know, good luck with that. And also he talks about humanity, and actually I am pretty excited about that. Yeah, I look at my face, it's horrible, I want to look like this guy. I want to be human again. Uh, so, two goals were given to you in just one tiny conversation. Two bells of awakening and humanity. So, that's what's driving me right now. And this was designed that way. They know what they're doing. What are you looking at? Don't try anything clever. <laughs> you might regret it. Alright, he's saying that because in the 
very in the previous conversation he was saying you need to kill a healthy undead and pillage his humanity and now he says don't look at me like that mm -hmm. well you want to hear more oh, yes more info please need. another inquisitive soul well listen carefully then one of the bells is up above in the undead church but the lift is broken you have to climb the stairs up the ruins and access the undead bell through the waterway. The other bell is up back there. down below the undead bell, within the plague-infested blight town. But I die mm. again before I step foot in that cesspool. <laughs> so he's saying I die again. So he is undead, he's died a few times, and he has restored his humanity somehow. I'm curious about that. Let's find out. Anywhere? Yeah, people are lost. Let's explore. Humanity. Oh, that's interesting. I was just talking about humanity. Ah, let's read this. A rare tiny black sprite found on corpses. Used to gain one humanity and restore a lot. A large amount of hit points. This black sprite is called humanity, but little is known about its true nature. If the soul is the source of all life, then what distinguishes the humanity we hold within ourselves? Here's the soul. Soul of a lost undead who has long ago gone hollow. Used to acquire souls. Souls are the source of all life and whether undead or even hollow, one continues to seek them. Alright, so the game is called Dark Souls and yeah, it's, it's all about humanity and souls. Well, the story is. Um, it's, a, it's a very complex story actually, I shouldn't have said that it's all about, but this is a big, big part of the game. All of these spirits we see here. These are actually other players who are playing right now. Alright, well let what? Someone died here? How did that happen? Oh tough luck. There are actually a few things that can kill you here. Um Well there's a few doorways go over here. I'm just gonna explore. I'm not gonna waste time explaining everything. I'm loving this. A statue, a mother and a baby. And a chest that's been opened already. Apparently by all those people that that guy was talking about. Here's the, the crow. It's friendly. Uh, here we see a graveyard. Um, a lot of new new players come over here and get their butts kicked. Uh, there are skeletons that are pretty tough. A lot of people actually go and kill themselves over there trying to get a few items and they're okay with that. They just go and die, get revived, but they have the item on them still. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna play the game like it's supposed to be played. Yeah, you're supposed to jump like that on the walls. That's how that... <laughs> I'm joking. Let's look at some of these here. Level up. Each level up... Costs souls. So you can see up there, level 2 souls. 2000, etc. Required 690 to level up. And each level gives you one point into something. Vitality and tumor, endurance, etc. Um... Hmm, what would I do? I'll, I'll go like that for now. To magic, this is where I get my heal, I think I showed that already. Kindle, cannot kindle while hollowed. In reverse hollowing, no humanity. So, you see that zero zero next to my life and stamina? Uh, that is my humanity. 
I, I picked up a few sprites from this corpse here, but I don't want to use humanity yet, right now. Let's come this way. Oh, hello. Hello there. I believe we are not acquainted. I am Petrus Harrowin. Have you business with us? If not, I'd prefer to keep a distance, if possible. Hello there. I realize that I have requested that we retain our distance. But I also want you to know that it is not meant in ill will. Here, take this as a token of peace. No, go ahead. It's for you. A copper coin. Oh my, you again. Oh, I know. How about this? I have to await my companions here anyway. So what if I were to teach you some miracles? Would that please you? Yes, please. Very well. Then first, a covenant with the gods. I'm already in this covenant. Uh, if you remember, when I was picking my character, I picked a cleric of Thorland. And this guy said that he is Petrus of Thorland. So we're basically from the same... I'm not sure what Toroland is, they never say it's either a country or a city, but uh, yeah, now, we're friends. Share my miracles. Only their ultimate effectiveness will be determined by your efforts and your faith. Of course, friend. Okay, learn gesture, shrug. Um. Covenant, talk, items. Okay, here we go. Great heal. Homeward, this teleports you back to your last bonfire. Force, seek guidance, heal. Great heal excerpt. Uh, okay, great miracle cast by advanced clerics. Restores high HP. Great heal excerpt borrows from only several verses of great heal. As a result, it can only be cast a stark few times. I really like this description here. They say several verses of great heal. So as as in like do they recite a thing when they cast these things? Do they just make a prayer? It's pretty cool how, how it's worded here. Uh, great miracle cast by advanced clerics, return to last bonfire rest yet. This is homeward. Would normally link to one's homeland, only the curse of the undead has distorted its power redirecting casters to a bonfire or perhaps for undead this serves as home force common miracle among cleric knights create shockwave this quickly acting miracle inflicts no damage but propels foes back and defends against arrows cleric knights use this miracle when charging into enemy mobs seek guidance miracle of clerics on an undead mission <laughs> Display more guidance from other worlds. Guidance facilitates communication between undead, but their value varies greatly. A balance of faith and wisdom is required. What they mean here, a balance of faith and wisdom, faith is your stat faith. Wisdom is the player's wisdom knowing how to use this. I don't know how to use this. There's apparently some uh, messages dropped by by developers that can only be seen with this thing on. Um, heal. Uh, elementary miracle cast by clerics. To cast a miracle, the caster learns a tale of the gods and casts a prayer to be blessed by its revelations. Heal is the shortest of such miraculous tales. So, what we said here about great heal, it's only a few verses of great heal. This is the normal heal, like a short tale of the gods. So every miracle, basically what I understand, every single one of these is a story that you recall when you cast the, the miracle. Here's a few talismans. Here's an interesting one, a Thorland talisman, as opposed to a normal talisman. Uh, this is a medium for casting miracles of the gods. This talisman is only granted to high-ranking Thoroland clerics. It has high miracle adjustment, which, thanks to divine protection, is not dependent upon fate. 
Uh, what now? So this is very interesting to me. The Thorland Talisman um, is not dependent upon fate. How does that work? Well, like everything we heard over here, it's all about the gods and, and blessings and prayers and such. And all of a sudden, Thorland, yeah, screw fate, whatever. <laughs> uh, we'll learn more about all of that stuff. But all of these little tidbits here uh, get you started on the on the story. All right, I talked again, enough. The effectiveness of the teachings depend upon your faith. Let's go. Let's go do stuff now. I'm gonna explore here a little bit. And um, up there, see that corpse up there on the roof? We'll get there. You can see that he has a soul. Yeah. We'll come here. Um, and this is the lift that uh, the guy by the bonfire mentioned. He said that the lift is broken, you have to take the stairs. And check out that pretty cool uh, secret room that they made. Oh. Get over here. Like a hidden area. Pretty cool. Homeward bone. Oops. A morning star and another talisman. Cleric stuff. Cracked red eye orb. I'm gonna read all of these items. They, the items themselves, paint a picture for you here. Lloyd's talisman. So, I'm gonna come over here, nice and safe. And then really quickly, I'm gonna go over these items we just found. So, this is an online item. Defeat the master of the world you have invaded to acquire humanity. You can invade other players with this thing. The Cracked Red Eye Orb allows players to temporarily imitate this ability normally limited to the Dark Raids of Cade. We get a few names there. Dark Raids of Cade. And by the way, this thing, we, we've had it since the very beginning. This black crystal, longest symbol of farewell, is granted to banished undead. The crystal sends phantoms back to their homes or sends you back to yours. Glorifical use, blah blah blah. Right, here's the Lloyd's Talisman, this is pretty cool. Talisman utilized by all Father Lloyd's cleric knights to hunt down the undead. Blocks Estus recovery within a limited area. Basically, you throw it and undead people cannot use their healing flask. In the outside world, the undead are accursed creatures, and Lloyd's cleric knights are widely praised for their undead hunts. This blessed talisman blocks undead recovery, allowing the knights to fight with impunity. The Homeward Bone, Bone Fragment reduced to White Ash, Return to Last Bonefire. Bonefires are fueled by bones of the undead. So that bonfire over there that we rested at, fueled by bones of the undead. In rare cases, the strong urge of their previous owners to seek bonfires enchants their bones with a Homeward Instinct. Pretty dark, I think. And this is the copper coin that we received from uh, from Petrus of Thorland, that cleric over there. Coin made of copper. Its face shows all men McLeof, god of medicine and drink. Even coins of great value in the world of men have little value in Lord Ran, where the, where the accepted currency is souls. Those who dream of returning to the outside world are fond of carrying these around. So the fact that he gave this to us, does that mean that he doesn't want to go back? Well, that's how I take it, I don't know. But the picture I wanted to to paint here. So we have a Lloyd's Talisman, which is a cleric item. We also found a Morning Star. Um, it is just a normal weapon, but this is the weapon that Petrus the, the cleric over there is carrying, so that's an interesting coincidence. And also he had on him um, a talisman? Yeah. He had a normal talisman as well here. 
So the way I see this, and this is the opinion of most people, this is the, the stash of a cleric. A morning star, Lord's Talismans. Um, I, uh, I better get out. These are. Um, I'll show you how tough they are. You can see that I'm doing very little damage here. I missed. Oh, I'm gonna jump on them. Oh, I missed. Nope. So a lot of new players would would be in big trouble here. If you don't know ooh, what, what you're facing, what you're getting into. Oh, and in fact, right there, someone died right there. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna get these guys and then I'm gonna check it out. That guy's done. Done. Let's see how someone died. Tried to kick with a knife. That's probably a wizard, and got stabbed somehow. Um, I, I'm not gonna experiment with this area, although there are some very cool items there. Actually, why shouldn't I? I'll show you what. what <laughs> I'm gonna try to do this thing that everyone does. Just rush in there and try to get all these cool items and I mentioned that it's a suicide mission yeah pretty much Run. so I got a zweihander uh, a very cool spear ow oh holy crap yeah I tried to roll, it didn't work. So I died, I lost 2000 souls, uh, sorry, 200 souls, but I got two very cool weapons. I said I won't do it, but I did it. <laughs> so this is a very nice spear. Uh, nothing special about it in the description. It's five hander, a lot of strength. One of the gigantic straight swords, as the name suggests, the Zweihander is held with two hands, but its wielder must still be inhumanly strong. It is this great weight that sends foes flying when hit solidly. Unable to wield this weapon. <laughs> I love the animations for this stuff. When you cannot use a weapon, here's the two-handed stuff. Alright, let's go, oh, actually I'll show the, the morning star, it's very cool too. It actually has a bleeding effect. You can see here, There's it says 300, that's uh, bleeding, and basically it gets a percentage of of their health when you hit them a few times a percentage of their health gets drained and this is the path where that guy by the bonfire mentioned uh, that you that was a good good show good job you almost got me there uh, up there is the waterways, the aqueduct uh, that leads into the city. He was saying the the lift over there is broken. So let's go. Hmm. Actually, I want to mention something about the des design here. See that guy over there, that uh, guy with the shield. The, the critical path, the, the path normally people would take is up here and up, up, up and so on. Uh, they wouldn't really go and fight that guy unless they really want to. He's not gonna come here, he's not gonna fight you unless you go to him. Just another 
tiny tiny detail that makes the game awesome basically if you feel confident if you're good enough and you think you can handle it you're allowed to try it they, they give you the option to to go ahead and have fun if you don't feel like it you don't have to and yeah I do think that is awesome because it's just genius level design it allows you to to go ahead and and try it if you feel like it or just stick to the to the main path if you're not that confident yet oh. you can see that he was way tougher than those guys Soul of a Lost Undead. So yeah, as I said before, all of these details, all of the tiny, tiny little stuff that you you may think that doesn't it doesn't make a difference. Yeah, it makes a difference. You may not be thinking about it, but you're feeling it. And and they use that trick where they put a tougher enemy to the side of the main path. They use that often. Getting lots of souls. Does not open from this side. Thank you. Be wary of blocking. Feeling the the mace was doing more damage. Let's do that. Oh yeah. And this here is where the absolute genius, genius, genius of Dark Souls comes, starts, begins. And I will show you what I mean. This area, the Undead Burg. We're gonna talk about this. It is, it is, in my opinion, the best designed area in any game I have seen. Yes, that's my opinion, but tell me I'm wrong. We'll talk about it. Give me a like, guys. I'm gonna stop the episode here, right in front of the gate of uh, the white light leading to death <laughs> uh, we'll go through the white light in the next episode please give me a like i'm just starting to build up my channel and i would really appreciate a like and a comment and a subscribe if you enjoyed it please do thank you again see you next time